York Tech Summit, Double Down with CDI. We've been traveling up and down the coast doing these throughout the year. The other events have been at casinos, and since we don't have one in New York, uh, we're building one downstairs for cocktail hour after. So hopefully you guys have been visiting the partner booths, collecting chips. You can use that along with the chips that they're going to give you downstairs at the cocktail hour later. But first, we have the educational and fun part here um, with panels of our, from our partners, panels with our customers. Uh, and with that, I want to have the day officially kicked off and bring up our Chief Revenue Officer, Jason Calvis Mackey. Hey, good morning. Good morning, good afternoon. Uh, hold up one second here. One second. Hey, guys. Thanks. Had to round them in. So, um, first off, great to see everybody here. We, we did our first uh, tech summit in 2019, and the spirit of that was really bring a multi-vendor partner community together and talk about best practices and networking and address, you know, the problems that we all, we all face. So, it's really good to be back in Manhattan. Great to see everybody. Uh, happy holidays. Thanks for making it. Uh, for those that were here or, or weren't here, we started off the day with a woman in IT leadership uh, breakfast. Uh, we had Molly Bloom here. It was really awesome. I was downstairs. There was a tremendous amount of energy in that room. I will tell you, I didn't watch the movie, but Molly Bloom is a total badass. Um, I dig it. But that was a really awesome event. A lot of strong women leaders in that room. So at CDI, that's something we really support and we encourage. And we just we love to see that. So um, awesome start to the day so far. I have to thank our partners and our clients. So to our, our partners, our OEM partners, thank you for your commitment to CDI. Thank you for your dedication. Thank you for fighting the good fight and bringing awesome products to market and technology solutions to help our clients. And to our clients, uh, we appreciate the trust that you place in us, right? We, uh, I want you to know as Chief Revenue Officer, the rest of the executive team, we have a strong sense of duty to uh, support you and, and, and drive good outcomes for you. So we appreciate the trust that you place in us. And uh, again, we're, we're here, uh, you know, talk to any of the leadership, we're, we're here to help, right? So, so thank you guys, round of applause, please. So in terms of the agenda, we have a couple awesome panels coming up that are driven by our, our CTO group. Guys, quiet down, please. Is that Chris Black? Yeah. He's one of our CTOs. He misbehaves sometimes. So we have two CTO panels talking about very interesting uh, solutions, outcomes, automation workflows. And we have a client panel at the, uh, at the end of the day. And then we have some fun in the evening. So it should be an awesome day. And, you know, I would just tell you from my lens, uh, there's a lot going on in the world right now, right? So when you kind of look at IT, we're, we're coming off of COVID and the pandemic where, in my view, uh, IT really shined, right? Like they, they did an awesome job is the workforce decentralized. And um, you know, when you look at that, the expectations are not decreasing, they're, they're increasing, if anything, right? Um, I'm not an economist. There may or may not be a recession. We may or may not be in one, don't know. Supply chain's not really fully uh, you know, back to normal, the, the talent, right? So we have a lot to talk about. And you know, I would just say now, like we as a community, like this is a really good time to come together share best practices, network. Again, we've got a lot of great clients in the room. We've got a lot of great partners, a lot of great uh, technology solutions. So, you know, these events are for you all. So I appreciate you coming here. Uh, thanks for the time. Again, be a fun day and uh, happy holidays. And the last thing I will tell you, if you're a customer, we are coming up on our end of fiscal year in December. So if you're able to, you know, work towards, if we have business on the table, get us a PO. Next couple of weeks, we would, we would greatly appreciate that. And feel free to talk to your account rep. So. Thanks, guys, and look forward to uh, seeing you the rest of the day. Take care. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Will Huber. I'm the CTO here at CDI. Um, it's been a long time since we've done something like this. Actually, I'm going to talk about the last time we did something like this and all the change that has happened uh, to our company and to our messaging and our capabilities throughout uh, really the past three years. Um, and I'm going to, at risk of, of maybe repeating some of the things that Jason mentioned, I'm going to sort of run through the, the run of the day with a little bit more color. So um, we're here right now to talk about what we call the technology foundation to accelerate innovation. So this really is going to be me communicating our core messaging that we tell out to the world, which really is meant to describe what it is that we do, who it is that we do it with, and how it is that we do it, right, to help our customers be successful with the, the vast um, 
uh, array of capabilities that we bring to the market. Um, because we realize that a lot of you may know us for some things, but with the amount of change that we've been through in the past couple of years, there's probably more things that we do that you don't know us for than the things that, you, that we do uh, that you do know us for. So um, that's the feedback that we consistently get. So that's what, that's what um, we're aimed to solve for in this opening session. Um, and then after that, as Jason described, we're going to go through a series of expert-led panels. So we have representation from the various different solution pillars um, at CDI. And you'll, you'll understand why it is that we call them solution pillars here in a couple of minutes. Um, but the first one really is centric to hybrid cloud infrastructure, digital workspace, and security. And then the second is uh, focused around modern application platforms, intelligent operations, and something we call digital workflow. Um, so you can see that the faces will do proper introductions uh, when the time is right, when those folks uh, come up. And, um, and then following our, our two CDI-led expert panels, uh, we have three customers who have graciously offered us their time to be able to come up, uh, sit with us on stage, answer some questions, uh, answer your questions, hopefully. Hopefully you've all been thinking about what you might want to ask uh, the various different experts, whether they be customers or CDI employees. Um, and we'll talk about maybe some incentives that we have to, um, to get people uh, to, to build up the courage to, to ask some questions live. I think we have uh, some wireless mics. We're going to have mic runners uh, when the time is right. So think about your questions as I go through our core messaging. Um, whether it's technical or business related, it doesn't matter. You guys can ask us anything you want. There's nothing that's off the table. Um, and we'll do our best to, to answer those with, uh, with complete transparency and, and candor. Um, and then following that, we have our after party. Uh, Alyssa mentioned there are no casinos on the island of Manhattan, so we're bringing the casino here. Um, and the reason for that is because the, the event theme is something we call Double Down with CDI. It's a casino theme. Uh, we've held these events regionally. Uh, we did one in Philadelphia, and we did one in the Washington, D.C. metro market. And now comes New York. So we had to get creative and bring. We wanted to stick with the theme. The format is something that's actually been really well accepted from, from customers in those geographies. So we didn't want to mess with a good thing. If it works, we're going to continue to do it. And we wanted to bring it to you in this format. So uh, a little more details about the after party. So uh, it's actually right underneath where we're standing. So when we're done for the afternoon, we're going to go down these stairs that are over here to my left or your right. Um, and then there'll be signage and people to, to help us. Um, and then there's a couple of um, important uh, incentives. So Jason thanked our or Jason already thanked our, our sponsors. Uh, I just want to say, and really echo and double down on this. I, I think, you know, three years ago, the last time we did an event like this, um, it was sort of a unique thing to have multi-vendor events, right? We used to do a lot of events in the past where it was one vendor. Maybe it was a Dell event, or maybe it was a, a, a Pure event, or a Microsoft event, or you, you get it, right? Um, but we sort of broke the mold and started doing these multi-vendor events, um, which have been just tremendously successful um, on, on both sides, right? For the, for the customers, for us, uh, and, and actually for the partners as well, because it's a big ecosystem, right? And, and integrators like us are really bringing a lot of these technologies and these vendors together to create outcomes and deliver, to deliver multi-vendor solutions for customers. Uh, which is a great thing. So I do want to you know, echo the, the thank you. Without the sponsorships, uh, events like this can't happen uh, for obvious reasons. Uh, so I just want to say thank you and, and express uh, our gratitude to all of our sponsoring partners. OK, so hopefully, speaking of partners, hopefully you've been visiting them in the, the east and the, and the west wings here um, and collecting poker chips. So those poker chips you can use to play. It's, uh, each poker chip that you collect from a vendor is, is worth $25. Uh, it, it is funny money. It's not real $25. But for those of you, um, it'll become obvious why. But when we go downstairs, there'll be various different games. You can, you can play with those chips to play the games. Um, there are, uh, while they, it is funny money, there is a, a real uh, prize of monetary value. I don't actually know what it is, but it doesn't matter. There's a real prize at the end for the person who leaves the night uh, with the most funny money. And if you can't stay till the end, that's OK. Um, as people leave, we'll be recording you know, and tallying what people have, have earned or won. Um, and if you're not here to collect your prize, we will contact you uh, afterwards. $10 million. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Um, we also have a game. So everybody should have, should have downloaded the Socio app. So Socio is a technology that was acquired by Cisco. It's now part of the WebEx events platform. Uh, of course, you know, WebEx is a strategic partner and Cisco is a strategic partner of CDI. So you can see the screenshots here on the, on the left. Uh, if you open up the, the main screen of the app, you can click the little uh, event game icon, uh, and there will be questions there. Right? Some of those questions are partner-centric. You can get answers from the partners that are in the booths. Some of those are to learn things about CDI employees. So I think there's a question in there about Rich. There's a question in there about me. There's a couple questions about others. I think Rob has a question in there. So go find us, talk to us, engage with us, and get the answers to those questions. Get the codes, enter them into the app. Um, and then you can see the leaderboard, right? Full transparency, you go to the leaderboard, you can see who's winning, and there are first, second, and third place prizes uh, for those who accumulate the most points. Okay, so um, we talked a lot about partners. Let's talk about customers. So we do these events for customers. I think there are 84 unique customers in the room today, or at least customers that registered for this event. And what I love about this is there's big customers, there's small customers, there's just about every vertical imaginable, financial services, healthcare, legal, pharma, public sector, education, uh, manufacturing, you name it. I'm sure I missed a couple. Uh, the gaming industry, right? You'll, you'll hear from some of those folks um, later today. So I just want to say uh, these events are for you. We hope you get something out of them, and we really do appreciate you spending hours of your day with us today. Uh, so again, thank you. Round of applause for our customers who are in the room. So I mentioned it's been three years since I have stood on a stage like this in New York City um, to do an event. So it was November of 2019, just a couple of months before this whole pandemic thing hit us. Um, and this actually was an example. This is a picture. It was like we like turned heads with this one, right? We had Pure and we had Dell sitting next to each other on a stage for the first time. Um, this was like the, the real beginnings of these multi-vendor events that I'm talking about. Um, we had, you can see there's ServiceNow, there's VMware is there, I think AWS was there, um, Cisco, uh, of course, was there. Um, and, you know, a lot has changed at CDI since that time, right? Three years is a long time, especially in our industry. Um, and, you know, we, we haven't just been stagnant for the past three years. We've been, we've been pretty busy. So at that time, our company was rough and tough, you know, a $300 million company in terms of revenue. Uh, about the same in terms of headcount, give or take uh, a, a little bit. And in the last three years, we have actually tripled in size as an organization, um, which is really just tremendous growth. And some of that growth, half of the growth, came from acquisitions. So I mentioned we've been doing this event in other geographies that three years ago we really didn't have a huge focus on. Right? We've been expanding our influence geographically into various different markets. We've been expanding into Philadelphia, Washington, D.T. Metro, and now we have efforts going on in Boston and Miami and sort of, sort of filling in the map uh, on the eastern part of the United States. But I think is what is more interesting is that in addition to the acquired revenue, which is just the, the total revenue, you add up all the, the revenue of the companies that we acquired was $300 million, we actually grew 300 on top of that, right? Which I think is that really starts to tell... The, the value of combining businesses and capabilities because ultimately what happens is we can do more things for customers with a bigger organization, right? Which is really core. We're seeing a lot of consolidation in the market right now. Um, and it's because customers are actually driving that consolidation. Customers are wanting to do more things with a fewer number of strategic partners that they engage with. We hear from customers and vendor management organizations all the time that they're trying to take the number of companies that they buy from and that they consult with down from whether it's, you know, 500 vendors to 200 vendors or whatever the number is, generally the trend is, is that it's trending down. And the reason for that is because of this consolidation that's happening here. And so I mentioned that a lot of you probably don't know, so we're going we're gonna to sort of hit reset and tell the CDI story now about all the things it is that we do, right? And so if, if, if somebody asked me in one sentence to describe what it is that CDI does, it's that we build and we manage secure technology platforms that help customers really do three things. We want to help you accelerate innovation. We want to help you reduce costs wherever possible. And we want to help you eliminate or, or reduce risk wherever possible. And I'm going to explain how we do that through a series of something we call the, the, the four Ps. Right, so you'll, you'll understand why I'm doing this in a second. So first and foremost is the platform, sometimes described as the pillars. 
right? And again, I'm gonna build out our go-to-market strategy. You're gonna see this, this pillar-based graphic. But really, this is the platform that we're talking about. This is the technology platform that is made up of all the capabilities that are needed for a customer to be successful in the multi-cloud digital world. Okay, so that's number one. P number one is the platform. P number two is the partners, right? We're here with, we have 30 sponsoring partners in this room. CDI has probably close to 200 partners now at this point, right? So we have 30 of them are here today, um, but we work with our partners to represent their technology and to provide services and expertise around that technology to help our customers be successful. The third P is our people, right? We are in a people business. And the people are the most important thing about any company, right? It, it, I don't care what industry you're in, you have to have good people, and we have some of the best around. And then last but not least, we have the portfolio is the fourth P. So the portfolio really is what is the collection of services, whether they be professional services, managed services, um, that allow us to augment our partners' capabilities on that platform to deliver outcomes for customers, right? Those three things that I talked about. So most of the customers in this room probably know us for the solution area number one, or the first pillar, which we call hybrid cloud infrastructure. So all the rage right now, I mean, we've been in the data center business for the better part of three decades at this point. Um, we've been doing networking consulting, and we've been selling servers and storage arrays, and many of you have been doing that with us for a very, very long time, right? Those of you who remember the early 2000s, we stepped into the, the kernel mode virtualization game with VMware, that changed the game, changed the landscape, and then we started seeing the convergence and the hyperconvergence of infrastructure platforms, right? Going from three tier down to hyperconverged. And a lot of you have sort of been with us on this journey the entire way, right? Now the rage is all about the public cloud platforms and the enterprise container platform, right? How do we sort of take the things that we've been doing for the last two to three decades, but do those things in modern ways with higher levels of abstraction, third party service providers, the hyperscalers, you name it. And last but not least, a huge trend that we're seeing is that everything, we're not building and managing infrastructure the way we used to anymore, right? We're doing so with software engineering principles and we're doing so with infrastructure as code um, and applying software engineering concepts to how we actually stand up, build, and lifecycle manage infrastructure. Okay, so we're helping customers adopt multi-cloud, right? The, the, the cloud world today, there, there is no one answer, right? We're seeing 75% of companies out there are already consuming uh, public cloud resources from more than one cloud provider, right? That number is only gonna go up. Okay, number two, remaining resilient with security. So this one is super exciting for me because three years ago, our security game, like just being transparent, was pretty weak, like almost non-existent, okay? Um, we have a, $75 million consulting, or not consulting, a $75 million uh, security business um, that is made up of a lot of advanced security capabilities, a lot of it service driven, okay? So we have a, a red team that's on our staff that engages with customers in security strategy assessments uh, to help them do you know, gap assessments and vulnerability assessments and to help them understand where they have holes in their strategy and then we can augment and fill those holes with the technology that our partners in our security ecosystem uh, that they provide. And then we also have services capabilities to actually wrap those um, and actually operationalize the security investments that are filling those holes. And we have some really advanced packaging, uh, something we call our cybersecurity advisory program, which treats this as an annuitized, a continuous, uh, continuous improvement cycle, right? Where you pay us a, a, a flat monthly fee and we provide the security expertise in an ongoing basis because it's never a one and done, right? You have to constantly evaluate your security posture as things change, as you move things to the cloud or move things back to the data center, you have to constantly evaluate your security position and make sure that you, you are not exposed. I believe, you know, it's only been three years and it's almost 10% of our, of our top line revenue as a business. I believe this business could easily be 20% as, uh, as we grow in the next couple of years. So category number three, modern applications. So modern applications, we are all about supercharging developer productivity, right? Happy developers and productive developers are the ones that are actually spending their time at work writing code, right? But far too often, we hear from customers, 
from developers, in particular at our customers, that are stuck in things like uh, root cause analysis meetings and these finger pointing exercises. When they push something to production, it breaks all the time and they're trying to figure out why, what changed, who did what, who did this. And so our modern applications platform or that, that solution area of our business is really designed around helping enable our IT teams that we sell to to provide platforms, processes, and tools to enable their developers to spend their day in their native habitat, right? Spend their day in their IDE, writing code, committing it to their, their Git repo of choice, and everything from that point, that, that point forward should just happen, right? The actual build of the artifact, the source control of the artifact, the, the, the scanning of that artifact, the build of the container image, the, the testing uh, that needs to happen, the actual release and, and, and all the updates of systems that need to happen, the instrumentation of, of, that, of that infrastructure that, that that thing gets deployed to so that we can monitor and observe it. All of that should happen automatically, and that's what we focus on uh, with developer productivity. Next, we have something we call intelligent operations. So this is a really interesting one, and I think one of the, the most exciting areas of opportunity for us and for our customers. And it's driven by the fact that as we move things to the cloud, we have more things in more places. And generally, we don't have more people or an ability to actually look after all of these things. So we need to change the way we do operations. We talk to customers all the time that tell us, I do things one way in AWS, I do things another way in my data center, I do things a third way with Google, and a fourth way with Microsoft. I have different tools for all these things, I have different teams, different people, different processes, and it's an absolute nightmare. And that problem only gets worse as you continue the journey to the cloud, because again, you're putting more things and more eggs in more baskets, and it becomes more difficult to actually look after it all. So our intelligent operations portfolio is really all around how do we abstract away those differences between those different infrastructure platforms? How do we get consistent tooling and process to monitor and observe an application or infrastructure, regardless of what it is, whether it's modern, traditional, whether it's in the cloud, or whether it's in my data center? It shouldn't matter, right? How I monitor, how I secure, how I patch, all these things, how I report, all of these things um, should be consistent. Uh, granted, there will always, in some cases, be nuances, particularly as you get into the higher tiers of services, but the goal should be it doesn't matter and it should be completely transparent whether something is in AWS or in my server closet somewhere. So that's intelligent operations. And that really is all driven around this idea of reducing cost and complexity. We have a lot of really interesting capabilities in this space. We often find, and we're gonna talk about this in the panels when Brian is up here, most of our customers, because of this paradigm, are actually over-invested in tools. They have too many tools, and we find that customers are looking for ways to actually reduce the number of tools and deploy a fewer number of tools in a more complete way, right, that allows you to perform these functions across different cloud, pl cl cloud platforms. And part of the reason why this happened is because in the early days of cloud, the adoption was very much opportunistic, right? Somebody, some dev team, uh, or some pocket of the business, some line of business owner, even a project manager went out and said, I'm gonna go start consuming resources from AWS to launch this project. They completely circumvented IT, and they were given a blank check by the business to go and buy whatever they needed to make that project successful. And now all of a sudden I've got you know, two of this and four of that and seven of this, and it's an absolute nightmare for customers. And again, at scale, that problem gets worse. So we, have, we actually have some interesting assessments where we, that we have the ability to deploy teams of consultants to go and identify where that duplicative spend is, eliminate it from the environment, and most of the time, there's actually a positive ROI, and you're actually saving money at the end of that engagement. So something that we'll have Brian talk about when he's up here uh, presenting. Okay, the fifth one. Um, deliver exceptional experiences with something that we call digital workflow. So we've all become super accustomed to, almost like the, in, in our consumer lives, we've become accustomed to self-service experiences, uh, marketplaces, digital app stores, right? Whether you're a, you know, the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store, you know, there's an expectation now um, in our personal lives for sure, and we're starting to see this bleed into our professional lives, that you wanna just go and be able to ask for something, and the expectation, it's, it's like the Amazon experience. 
You go to Amazon, you put whatever you want in your shopping cart, two days later it shows up at your door, right? It's pretty amazing. Now, all the stuff that happens underneath that to make that experience happen happens to be tremendously complicated and really difficult to do, right? But the way that it happens is through these digital workflow platforms, right? That there's Bill McDermott, who is the CEO of ServiceNow, says behind every great customer experience is a great workflow, right? Now, sometimes those steps are manual, sometimes they're automated, sometimes there's a mixture of those two things. But to the end user, to the consumer, to your IT user, to your employee, to your end customer, there's a perception that everything is just automatic and I get what I asked for in some acceptable amount of time, right? So we work with customers to deliver these experiences and to publish these services through these marketplaces and storefronts and app catalogs and those types of things. Um, and maybe even not GUI driven, maybe it's just an API that we publish to a particular internal customer, to a dev team. We can deliver that experience using digital workflow platforms and you know what they are. Things like the ServiceNow platform, things like Salesforce, things like MuleSoft. These are all the types of systems that we can use to deliver and connect all of these different pieces together to deliver that outcome or that experience that our customers have come to expect from us. And last but not least, we have empowering the digital, or the, I'm sorry, the distributed hybrid workforce with digital workspace. That's a mouthful. We're gonna have to maybe consider changing that one. Um, so whether you use a phone, whether you use a video conferencing device, a laptop, a virtual desktop, uh, a, a, a virtualized application sometimes, a published app through maybe a, a Workspace ONE portal or a Citrix portal, a chat platform, something like Slack, something like Zoom, something like WebEx, something like Microsoft Teams, Office 365. Our employees are distributed and that's not gonna change. Right? We're gonna have hybrid meetings for the rest of time. Um, you know, I used to joke that we used to get, we, we used to be really, really good at holding all in-person meetings and then when the pandemic happened, we didn't have a choice. We got really, really good at holding productive, all remote meetings. But once certain, like, once one company started to go back to the office or somebody felt comfortable, now we're having like these, remember before the pandemic when we have, you know, like 15 people in a room and you were like the one straggler that was remote because you couldn't make it to the office that day? That meeting probably sucked for you, right, as the remote person. So the tools though, there's a lot of innovation that's happening in this space that's making that experience better and we have a lot of experience and a lot of expertise in terms of helping customers adopt these tools um, and, and empower their workforces to make them productive, happy employees. So this is the platform. All of the pieces put together, assembled, this is why we call it the pillars. Um, and I think this is, this is such a differentiator for CDI because if you look at traditional integrators or resellers of technology, like if you look at our, our peers, right, I'm not aware of anybody that can tell this story end to end, right? And we don't just sell the things that are here, right? I should probably advance this to the partner slide. We can't deliver the platform without our partners, right? CDI is not a software company. We don't make uh, servers or, or routers or switches. We don't write our own software, right? We represent our partner software. Now, within reason, we, can, we have developers on our staff that can develop applications on some of our partners' platforms, or in, in some cases, we can write uh, business applications for customers. We have done that in the past. Um, but at the end of the day, we need this ecosystem of partners in order to provide value to our, to our customers. Now, not all of these are totally strategic to us. Some of them are truly just fulfillment or, or resale capabilities, but the vast majority of them, we actually have services and capabilities to be able to not just implement one particular piece or one particular technology or vendor, but to actually, this really starts to get compelling when you start to integrate technologies from different pillars together to deliver those outcomes that we're talking about. And that's where we're seeing success and that's where we're seeing growth because not a lot of our traditional competitors are able to actually make that statement and back it up. So the most important component is the people. Now, admittedly, this is not the most beautiful slide on the planet, um, but the people are the most important ingredient to this, right? The people are what we need to deliver the services for our partners and ultimately for our customers. We have armies of people that specialize in all these different pillars, all these different solution sets, whether they be project managers, architects, engineers, developers, business analysts, consultants. Um, in the past, you know, we didn't have business analysts and consultants, and we didn't have developers, but we've made those investments over the years as our portfolio has diversified to be able to deliver 
the vast, um, you know, the, the wide capability of, of products that we represent now. And then the portfolio. So the portfolio, better said, is how do we package our services, right? And how do you engage, but maybe better said is how do you engage CDI? So there's really four ways. So the first way is through our pre-sales capability, which is what we saw, something we call, on this slide anyway, we call it strategy and architecture. So we have a pre-sales army of resources that specialize in all of the different pillar capabilities that you see on the screen there. So we have core SAs, we have digital SAs, we have security SAs. Um, that number, it's what? It's over 105 people now, Rob, right? So we have over 100 resources, highly trained resources, that are of zero cost to you as a customer, whether you buy something from us or not, quite frankly. Um, and that is an investment that we make uh, into our customer relationships. We help provide scale uh, to our vendors uh, in, in that capacity. And they can help you make decisions on where you should be investing, what partners should you be using. We have a lot of intellectual property that we've developed over the years that helps sort of break down some of the different categories. We call each of the individual icons their categories. Right, so maybe there's a, a hyper-converged infrastructure category. And in that category, there might be seven vendors. Well, who has the time these days to actually do uh, testing and POCs and bake-offs between seven different vendors? Instead, you could save hundreds of hours of time. You could work with a CDISA who's already done that work for you, and they can present to you the pros and the cons and help position the right product for your specific situation. Right? And it's not always, the answer isn't always the same. Right, there's a lot of different variables and, and things uh, that might cause us to position one particular technology over another. So that's strategy and architecture. Uh, the second thing is procurement. You can buy technology that was on the prior slide with the NASCAR logo slides of all the different partners that we represent. You can buy that technology from CDI right, in ways that are cost advantageous to you in a lot of cases. Right? The third area is our professional services organization. So we have a lot of unique ways that we package professional services. They could be project-based. They could be time and materials. It could be staff augmentation. There's a lot of different ways that we can engage with you uh, on a lot of all the different topics that you see here. And then last but not least, we have our, our modern IT operations services, um, something we call MITO for short. Um, these are typically SLA-driven. Um, and we have also some advanced consumption mechanisms that we're going to talk about in the panels, something we call next gen, which is really sort of an ongoing, continuous improvement. I talked about the cybersecurity advisory program. It's very similar, where we'll provide you a pod of resources around a particular technology or a use case and help you operationalize it um, in an ongoing, repeatable, predictable, flat monthly rate for you to be able to operationalize a technology. So we have that packaged for ServiceNow, we have that packaged for Salesforce, we have that packaged for DevOps. Um, we're working on some new interesting ones that we'll, we'll announce in, in future events. Um, but that, that's the last way that, uh, that you can engage with us. So with that, um, I'll say thank you. Hopefully you learned something, something new that CDI does that you didn't know that we did before. Please find one of us. We're going to bring up our panels here in about, I think we're going to take like a 10 to 15 minute break. Don't, please don't go too far. It took a long time to get you guys in here. Um, we're going to get a couple people mic'd up. We'll bring them up on the stage. Again, please think about your questions. Oh, I should have said that. If you have a question, we'll give you chips uh, for the, the poker game, right? So we can work towards that prize. All right, so uh, with that, thank you very much. And like I said, don't go anywhere. Thank you.